Hi, my name is Dave Wilhite. I've been teaching people how to beat the casinos for the past 15 years just by playing smart. The lottery hasn't changed in its basic form since it was first invented around the 15th century. In this tape, we'll not only show you how to pick your numbers, but once you've picked them, we'll show you how to play them to your advantage. It doesn't take magic to win the lottery. Just a nice slow pace and a little research. I live in Las Vegas, the gambling entertainment center of the world. I can play blackjack, I can play craps, I can play roulette. But when I want to play the lottery, I've got to go to California. Buying a lottery ticket is as simple as walking into your local convenience store and handing them money. In this instance, I'm using the quick pick machine where the machine picks the numbers for me. Or you can use the manual form where you pick your own numbers. There are over 9,000 lotteries in the world. Remember, no matter where you live, you can play a lottery in another country. If you live in America, you can play the Europe lottery. If you live in Australia, you can play the Europe lottery. And vice versa, if you live in Europe, you can play the American lottery. There are three basic types of lotteries. The first one is called the instant game. Because it is so easy to set up, the instant game is typically the first game initiated when a state passes lottery legislation. To win a prize, you merely scratch off the latex coating from a card and try to match up numbers or pictures. Because there is no way to show any type of consistent profit from this game, it is advised that you do not waste your money by purchasing these tickets. Strategy is not possible, so we won't spend any more time on this. The second type of lottery involves picking either a three or four digit number in this case four. For example, balls numbered from zero to nine are placed in either three or four containers, depending on whether it is a three or four ball pick. Forced air is then circulated inside each container. When the tube on top of the container is opened, the ball closest to the opening is forced up the tube and is trapped. This becomes the draw. The tops are opened on each of the containers until all balls are selected. These lottery picks occur almost nightly and require that the digits or numbers be in exact order. The tickets are purchased with combinations that range from 000 to 999 or 0000 to 9999 respectively. The payoffs are typically $500 for the three number combination and $5,000 for the four number combination. Using strategies included in this tape, you'll see that three and four digit lotteries are a playable game and must be considered. The third type of lottery game is commonly referred to as the lotto. The original pick six lotto requires picking six numbers out of a possible 49. The order of the numbers drawn in the lotto as opposed to a lottery makes no difference. All the balls are placed in a container and mixed up either by forced air or a revolving bin. Typically the bin is above a curved chute. Balls revolve and are then released one at a time down the tube or chute into a horizontal holding area. If it is a six ball draw, six balls are allowed to be released and gather at the end of the tube. These balls represent the draw for the week or day. The lotto is the highest paying game in the world with payoffs of over $20 million not uncommon. This tape will show you correct strategy necessary to become a lotto winner. Even if you do not win the six ball grand prize, the three, four, and five ball prizes paid each week can be very rewarding. And now, hint number one. Since 1978, six consecutive numbers have never come up in any lottery. Hint number two. And since 1978, five consecutive numbers have only come in seven times. Hint number three. Sixty percent of the time, the numbers published in a newspaper are wrong. The people in charge of the lottery would rather you not know what the exact odds are of hitting any particular lottery. Today we're going to show you 
a simple mathematical equation that will show you the odds of figuring out any lottery that you're going to play. We're going to start with the odds of hitting 6 out of 40. You take 40 times 39 times 38 times 37 times 36 times 35, which gives you a total of 2,763,633,600. Then you take 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives you 720. Then you take the 720, divide it into 2 billion, and the odds of hitting 6 out of 40 is 3,838,380 to 1. The odds of hitting 6 out of 49, you do the same thing, but you start with 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44, which gives you 10,068,347,520. You use the six same numbers, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives you 720. You divide the 720 into the 10 billion, and that gives you 13,983,816 to 1. For those of you that don't want to go through the trouble of figuring out what the odds are, we've done that for you here on the chart. The odds of hitting 5 out of 35 is 324,632 to 1. The odds of hitting 6 out of 36, 1,947,742 to 1. The odds of 6 out of 39, 3,262,623 to 1. 6 out of 40, 3,838,380 to 1. And the odds of 6 out of 49, 13,983,816 to 1. Now we're going to show you how to figure out what numbers come up most often. To do this, you need to make a chart similar to the one that we've done. We kept track of the numbers from March until June. On March 5th, the numbers were 13, 23, 33, 7, 36, and 38. After you've done all of your numbers, you need to put them in order from smallest to largest. 7, 13, 23, 33, 36, and 38. Now we'll show you how to put a chart together so you find out what numbers come up most often and in what position. Now that you made your chart with your numbers, we need to make another chart to find out how frequent and in what positions those numbers come up. We need to make a chart like this, numbered 1 through 49, with positions 1 through 6. Number 1 has come up in the first position one time. Number 7 has come up in the first position two times. We see number 10 has come up in the second position one time. After three games, we do see some sort of pattern developing. Number 7 has come up twice in the first position. Number 23 has come up twice in the third position. And number 38 has come up twice in the sixth position. After 14 games, we see quite a pattern developing. We see that number 1 has come up in the first position five times. Number 13 has come up in the second position three times. Number 19 has come up in the third position three times. Number 22 has come up in the fourth position four times. Number 27 has come up in the fifth position three times. And number 38 has come up in the sixth position four times. Hint number four. Remember, when people play the lottery, they like to play popular numbers or unpopular numbers. What are the popular numbers? Those are the ones that contain anniversaries, birth dates, holidays, and they all tend to be under 31. The unpopular numbers are the ones that are 32 and above. So it goes to reason, if you play the popular numbers, if it hits, you're going to have to split the money more ways. If you play the unpopular numbers, then you're likely to have the jackpot all to yourself. And now, hint number five. There are two schools of thought when it comes to picking numbers that are randomly drawn. You either pick numbers 
that seem to come up more frequently, or you pick numbers that are overdue. To win at the lottery, I suggest you pick numbers that come up more frequently. Hint number six. When you play the lottery, as much as 50 to 60 percent of the money goes towards schools and other community projects. So just think of playing the lottery as an easy way of paying your taxes. And remember, you must pay your taxes. And you might win a few bucks along the way. Now that you've come up with your numbers, we're going to show you how to use a wheeling system. It's very simple. We need a chart similar to this one. We're going to use 12 numbers in this example. And below it, we're going to write the numbers that we have picked. It doesn't matter what order they're in, because a wheeling system will take care of that. For our first number, we're going to put number 7. For our second number is number 23. For our third number is 45. For our fourth number is number 6. For our fifth number is 28. And for our sixth number is 21. Now that we've showed you how to start the chart, we want to show you how to fill it out completely. With this particular chart, you're going to substitute each number under the appropriate box. Number one will always be seven. Number two will always be 23. Number three will always be 45. Four will be six, and so on. This is what your completed chart should look like. Now you're ready to play 18 games for $18. With this chart, we're wheeling eight numbers. We wind up with two separate games. We have 12 games for $12. We have eight games for $8. Remember once again, when you're substituting the numbers, make sure that you're correct. Number one will always be 22. Number two, will always be 10. Number 3 will be 35. 4 will be 9. 5 will be 25. And 8 will be 27. All the way down the chart. On this chart, we're wheeling 9 numbers, which will give us 27 games for $27. If you belong to a lottery club or you just can't stop picking numbers, this chart allows you to wheel 15 numbers, which will result in 40 games for $40. With this chart, we're wheeling 15 numbers, which gives us 50 games for $50. There's a lot of different ways to come up with your numbers for the lottery. I was in a novelty store the other day, and I found this one. You just shake, and it comes up with the six numbers. Hint number seven. Let's talk a little bit about biases. When they manufacture these balls, each one is supposed to be absolutely perfect. Now, we know that nothing in this life is perfect except maybe my wife, Frances. But balls have a tendency to come up time after time after time. So if you're checking your local lottery and you see that balls or certain numbers are repeating, why not add them to your list of numbers just in case? Hint number eight. Studies have shown that using new balls or changing lotto machines can cause the biases to change considerably. Studies also show that numbers often go in trends that last from three to six months. Consequently, you should keep in touch with your lottery commission to find out when the machines or balls are going to be changed.
when it comes to picking numbers, there's four type of people. The random player, the sentimental player, the pattern player, and the system player. In this example, we show you a pattern player. We've got the cross, we've got the daisy, and we've got the diagonal. Then we have the sentimental player. What's a sentimental player? He likes to play birthdays, anniversaries, such as Aunt Aggie's birthday, 3, 13, of 33, and Uncle Mo's birthday, the 11th month, the second day of 1925. Then we have the random player. He just picks numbers because he likes the way they look. And last but not least, we have the system player. He's done his homework. He's studied the numbers. He knows that 21 has come up four out of the last seven lotteries. He knows that 12 hasn't shown up. He knows 33 is due, 24 is due, 16 is due, and 4. The biggest hint of all. If you belong to a lottery pool with friends, relatives, co-workers, it's not to say that they're going to be dishonest, but money makes people do strange things. So before you buy your tickets, you should get everything notarized in writing about what percentage everybody gets and who's going to keep track of the tickets. So you've tried all the systems, picked all the numbers, tried all the numbers, feeling a little frustrated? Let me show you how to relieve that tension. Remember my number shaker from the novelty store? Well, those numbers didn't work either. This chart shows the number of wagers it would take to cover all bets if you wheeled every possible combination from 6 to 13 balls in a lotto. As you can see, it would be very expensive to bet all combinations. For example, if you liked 11 numbers in the lotto, it would cost you $231 to bet all the combinations at 50 cents per play. At $1 per play, the cost rises to $462. Using a wheeling system will reduce your cost dramatically. The wheeling system in this tape is designed to cover enough of the combinations so as to provide a minimum assurance of winning. But this means that every possible combination does not have to be bet. The coverage is designed to consistently pick four, five, and even six ball winners at a fraction of the cost of betting all combinations. Remember once again, when you're looking at the chart, that the numbers at the top are your control numbers, one through nine. The numbers on the bottom are the numbers that you have picked. It's not important what order you put them down, put them down any way you want. And when you're filling out your chart, remember number one will always be 10. Number two, will always be 22. Number four will always be three. Number five will be 19. Number seven will be 25. And number eight will be 37. Once again, with this particular chart, you're wheeling nine numbers, which gives you 27 games for $27. A wheeling system allows you to bet six or more of your favorite numbers so that you have a better chance of winning the lottery without having to bet every combination. So in layman's terms, that means you don't have to worry about betting the same combination of the numbers twice. Like if you have 13 numbers, there's 1,716 possible combinations. By using a wheeling system, you will not reproduce any series of six numbers. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I misplaced my lottery ticket. I bought it last week, and I don't know where it is. 
How many times have you heard that happen? They say that over 7% of lotteries go unclaimed because of misplaced tickets. So when you buy your lottery ticket, you want to be especially careful where you put it. The last thing you want is to have the winning numbers and not know where the ticket is. Me, when I buy my tickets, I take them home and I tape them right on the refrigerator, all four sides, so that they can't be moved. You don't want to have the winning ticket and not know where it is. Or, worse yet, to have the story in the paper about the guy with the winning ticket and he misplaced it, that could be you. That's the last thing you want. Always keep track of your ticket. The following glossary of terms will help you to understand the lottery better. Bias, when an event happens more than expected. Frequency analysis, an evaluation of the likelihood of a particular number, how often each ball gets drawn. Hot number, a number most overdue for selection. Positional digit analysis, an evaluation of the order of the position that each ball gets drawn. Straight bet, a one ticket bet. Let's review what we've learned in this tape so far. We know that since 1978, six consecutive numbers have not shown up in any lottery. Five numbers have only shown up seven times. These are important things you need to remember when you're picking your numbers. Also, when you check your newspaper, remember 60% of the time the numbers are wrong. Normally there's a number that you can call for the lottery commission and they'll tell you what the winning numbers are. Once again, we know that the odds are long, but with a little homework and study, I think you can make the lottery very profitable for you. Remember, when it comes to playing popular numbers or unpopular numbers, when you play the popular numbers and the jackpot comes in, you're going to have to split it more ways. If you play unpopular numbers and your numbers come in, you're going to have the jackpot all to yourself. Which would you rather have? The next time you're in Guadalajara, be sure and play their lottery. They only use 44 numbers, so your chances are better. But also remember, they pay you in pesos. Now, if you think you can't win the lottery, you're wrong. All you've got to do is buy a ticket and believe if I can win it, anybody can. I hope that you've enjoyed this tape and that you've learned something from it. If you have, please look for my other videos in a store near you. Thank you and good luck.